Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Morning Mr. President. Morning. And welcome back. Thank from you. your Champions League trips. Thank you. And thank you for this press conference, Mr. President. But I, I would suggest that uh, to complement this, maybe in future we have more one-on-one -on -one, you know, interviews. Mr. President, there's no doubt you know, that you are adored abroad because of the aggressive way you are marketing you know, this country. But at home, even with the many successes that you have tabulated, there is growing discontent among some of the electorate and the citizens. How do you explain this? And related to that, recently you lamented that some of the ministries were underperforming. What decisive action are you taking? And being a senior journalist, a very quick one, this is important, Mr. President. Recently, you advised your you, predecessor. You're you breaking the rules of the engagement. As a senior citizen, and <laughs> since the moderator is a, since you have yeah. been, a, you have abused me, sir, and I can <laughs> abuse you, sir. Yeah, I, I take that one. Thank you, sir, <laughs> Mr. President. Recently, you advised your predecessor to retire from politics. How significant is this? What would be the impact on the country's governance? And what is your reaction to those calling for a reconciliation mean meeting? Meanwhile, the former face family are complaining that they're being harassed. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I think it's diamond. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Um, my, name, my name is Darius um, Jonia from Diamond TV. Um, Mr. President, I just wanted to get your um, official stance on the cultivation as well as usage of uh, hemp and medical cannabis um, in Zambia. Um, are we able to expect the implementation of related policies before 2026? And uh, also, furthermore, further on this um, same issue, Mr. President. Moderator, please manage the situation. One question. Only it's, the it's senior citizen. Please, please, politely. Eh? That's your role. Yeah. Darius, maybe we can, we can stick your, your question to him. It's, it's a, it's a follow-up on the same question. <laughs> yeah, because it would be unfair to Funga. Yeah. Yeah. It would be unfair to her. Yeah, I think exactly. the rules yeah. must apply, other than Frank. It's only fair. Please do your bit. Eh? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So um, your message is taken on your first question. Okay. So I think we have the three from Prime. The Frank, obviously, I was expecting that. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, could I suggest to my colleagues, journalists, your your moderator is a bit. Uh, just choose the, the most important question. The idea of doing this is to allow more people to come in. It's not really to restrict you, just to allow more people to come in, more diversity, please, please, please. Every arrangement has rules. Uh, that's really what you should be doing, my friend, not me. Um, Frank is special. He knows that he's special. He always knows. Um, Oswat, homegrown solutions to debt management. Here, because you particularly say the opposition are saying that, I think I ended my press briefing by asking the opposition to give alternatives, yeah. viable alternatives. That's my answer to your question.
question. Homegrown solutions to debt. I don't know what that means. Because if you owe someone money, you have to pay. You have to restructure. That's why we defaulted. In 2020, we defaulted because those asking for homegrown solutions had no homegrown solutions. They defaulted. This government has not defaulted. This government came in straight, also, to negotiate what we call debt service sustainability initiative upon taking office. This is what I called earlier on. We were filling the ground to say, how deep is this hole? Once we realized how deep it, the hole was, we went into a management program, an organized program, to ensure that debt default, which is a damaging thing to your credit rest rating. Part of the cost of money we are paying now, I didn't say that, arises from debt default, the way you are profiled by creditors. So I'm not sure which opposition is talking of homegrown. Let them define what they mean. Then we can answer. If the homegrown is about growing the economy, that's what we're doing. Because is paying your debt or restructuring your debt is only one side of the question. The other side is to grow your economy so that this proportion of the debt to the size of the economy gets smaller. But in this case, there was no solution to a debt other than borrowing more and more. On the flip side, the economy was declining. Dangerous business. Extremely dangerous business. And we don't want to go in that direction. Honestly speaking, fellow citizens, I ask you to pay attention to where your country is coming from and how it got there and how to take it out of that situation. I, I ask you to pay attention. If you are lost in the noise, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, and anything that is said in the social media is true, that's why I advised again, criticism is okay, positive or negative, as long as it's done factually, respectively, and maturely, professionally. But to make allegations or assertions that there's a homegrown solution, which did not work and worsen the situation, until we came into office and now we are stabilizing the country, the figures are there. The pain is there, of course. I, I alluded to it, isn't it? The restructuring process creates pain. If you remember, when the late Manawasa came in, part of the pain was that for three, four years, there were no salary increments for public sector workers. And he made it very clear that if you want to come out of the debt trap, he picked then, public servants were not going to get a pay sal salary increment for two, three years. It was part of the pain. But we've taken a different approach where we, are, we realize that people have been in pain for 10 years plus as you can see there. That's why we talked about those amelioration measures. You are also aware public sector workers are getting salary increments above inflation, actually, almost is close to all above inflation, because we recognize that Zambians have been in pain for a long time. But they still have to accept that things will only be better when we've gotten the economy going. I make this request to citizens seriously. That's where we lose it. Honestly speaking, we lose it as a nation. That's why we've been doing this. We lose it. The cat that catches the mouse is what you want. You may not like it. It may not be sociable enough to appease you with dancing. But that's what you want if you want your children to be in school, if you want jobs to be created, that's the card you want. And that's your UPND. You chose it. You elected it to do just that. And we're grateful for that. And we will not let you down. That's our message. We work so hard, even harder than what we're doing. Somebody in Paris asked me a question, he said, HH, we saw you yesterday in the afternoon at a meeting in Scotland. 
But in the same day, we saw you in the morning at a meeting in London, in England. This morning at 9, you are in a meeting in Paris with President Macron. How is that possible? I said, well, work has to be done. And I think Zambians, let us work, my dear fellow citizens. Nothing short of working and working hard and working smart will change your country. I want to appeal to you that we must join hands in changing the course of the country. It's all there. Today I did the press conference different. It's all there. It's here. Anything short of that becomes a desire which is not matched by reality. So that would be my answer. But we are open to advice. If colleagues in the opposition say, okay, look, we sank you into debt as a country. Now we have realized we made a mistake. We think this is a solution. We are happy to look at it. But that must come with credibility also, because the lenders will say, you guys are not credible anyway. You default. Again, Zambians must see that as an indictment, very serious indictment on ourselves and how we do things. But we're happy to take advice. I said it already. I'll go to Darius before I go to a senior citizen. Cultivation of medicinal marijuana. I think that's taking its course. I believe you are raising that in connection to the growth of the economy, to create business, opportunity sales. Um, I do believe that that's taking its course. I must honestly say to you, I have not got an update on that. I don't want to give you a wrong information, but we'll follow it up, uh, Darius, and we'll come back to you. And maybe through you, since you're a journalist, you can provide that answer to the public through your media. So that will be my answer to that. But I know the legislative issues, I know the operationalization issues, but I'm not competent now to raise that matter definitively. So you can forgive me for that, but we'll come back to you. Vamu Tuvila. Growing discontent at home. Um, I take note of what you say. But in a way, I've touched it already, that there is a process, there's some pain as you reconstruct the economy, Frank. At least you are old enough to know what happened towards the late, no, in the late 80s. You know what happened. Younger people may not know that story. It sits in there. You can look at that graph. The pain was there. And when change took place in 1991, again, numbers don't lie. Just check that, Frank. You see that that pain continued from 1991 election, when Zambians decided it's time to move to another team of public sector managers. 19 is all was exacerbated 19, after 1986 elections, Frank, 19, no, 1988, I'm wrong, my apologies. 1988, two years later, there was a food riot there. Then the elections were brought forward by three years. Instead of elections happening in 1990, by two years, I think, 1993 or so, 1991. But after the change for President Chiluba, may he so rest in peace, who now brought in different policies to address the failure of the government of 27 years. Younger people don't know that. And that's where we have sometimes a bit of responsibility to teach the young people how bad we were and why we should not allow ourselves to go back there. And we did allow ourselves to go back there in a few years. It's not right. So you see, Frank, 1991 elections take place. You're checking on that shit, right? The problems of restructuring the economy linger on, and 1994, we went down by growth dramatically. But President Chiluva had already started planting the seed, digging the foundation. You heard me talk about digging the foundation. Four years later, 
from 1991, three years later, the fruit was not yet ripe. And we dipped down and started again. It takes a bit of time. So that's my answer to your question. It's Zambians to understand that graph that we're on the right path. Any reversal to what we're doing would damage us as a nation. And I think that is what I would say around the discontent. The discontent is a build-up of the damage that was done 10 years earlier. And we are healing that damage. As it happened to President Chiluba, may so rest in peace. We take President Chiluba for granted. He's gone. But today, you have no queues for, many, for buses. But it took up to 1994, 1995 to see that fruit. But today, Zambians want to see the fruit in one year, eight months. But the seed is there. That's what I would say. And not to disturb you, Frank, if you check 1998, we were not yet there. There was another dip there. This was President Chiluba's second term. Into the second term, the dip came. We're working hard to avoid that dip. That's exactly the message I'm giving today. That's a message. And we're moving very fast. So we hope that Zambians can understand. But also, Frank, if a citizen in a house had two children in school, and they were paying school fees. Now they are not paying. It means they have saved money. It's as simple as that. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand that. If they didn't have any social cash transfer, now they have social cash transfer. If they are not on it, Minister Mwamba should make sure they are on it. You know anybody you seated here who is not on social cash transfer but qualifies, raise the bell. Raise the bell. Raise the alarm. That's my call. That's why we talked about 20% NAPSA, Frank, to inject cash in the economy and allow people to invest. All these measures are well thought through, methodically. So that's my answer, my dear senior citizen, on that one. You tagged another question, the only one allowed to do that. Underperforming ministers, ministries. I think you have noticed some changes we're making. I actually said maybe not to the satisfaction of everybody, but we are also a fair leadership. When you come from depression like that, you know that the civil service itself got affected over the years in underperformance. But we have changed as many as possible. We will continue to do that. That's why we put a program like PP. D, F, P, D, U, to assist those that are willing to change. Frank, those that are not willing to change, I'm afraid we have to part ways because our interest is service to the people of Zambia who elected us into office. That would be my comment. But I also encourage citizens, you know something that we don't know, let us know. Tip someone. Tip someone. Third question, Frank, you raised was about retirement. That was purely a legal issue. Purely a legal issue. I started with myself that when I've done my time, I'll retire and go and look after goats. The goats are waiting for me. <laughs> They need my attention, and I love them so much, and I think they love me, <laughs> because you can see how they multiply when we give them more time and attention. On a more serious note, it's a legal issue. You cannot be in retirement, and yet you're in politics. The law does not allow that. At the beginning, Frank, we talked about restoring the rule of law, isn't it? This is part of the rule of law. So who is offending who now? HH is not offending any individual or targeting anybody. It is the law that is being offended. You cannot be in politics, yet you are retired and you are re receiving retirement benefits, which is anchored on the law that says you must retire. I hope I'm making myself clear here. 
Let me extend the answer to your dry but loaded question. Eh? The law is clear. When the president, former president retires, they must not stay in politics, and the emoluments they get are based on the law, and they are provided for in the law. Today I see a headline in one of the newspapers to say, no, HH Light. It wasn't 13 policemen. It was eight. Okay. I asked the Secretary of the Cabinet, is he? Is there? I said, please, can you deal with that? Me, I'm given information to interpret the law. The law is clear. But in this case, if there was misinformation, it's the Cabinet Office. Is that my problem? It's the Cabinet Office. So what we've agreed with the Secretary of the Cabinet, he will clarify today that statement, what does the law say? How many policemen were there? But what I know that even eight is offending the law. Even four is offending the law. Because the number is three. So now you can see the malice in there. What's the malice that HH lied? Ah, honestly speaking. Mm. You can see how we've reduced things. The substance of the matter is not 13 or 8. The substance of the matter is that has the law been offended? The law has been offended. It's not HH. Frank, because you are a good man. On that day, I was not around when that halabu happened. And in the morning, the insults were going at HH. Insults by colleagues that have been in politics for a long time. And I just smiled, never answered, never answered. In the afternoon, the charge was laid, a complaint from a citizen. A citizen who is infringed, the law, Bill of Rights, a citizen who is infringed in this country called Zambia, territory, has a right to complain, and their complaint must be heard. That's in the Bill of Rights. Minister, am I right? And the authorities, be it the court or so, don't have a choice. The word is obligation. Am I right, Minister? I may miss the exact word, but it's obligation, Frank. To act, that's the rule of law. But why were the insults directed at HH? Am I the one who complained? Am I one, the one who received $400? I don't know. <laughs> to do that, end to end. But the insults were loaded to me, and the social media was very excited. The charge was laid. It had nothing to do with uh, any minister, the president. It had to do with the law, based on what the law says. So you can see. So, and to claim that HH is harassing a family is not true, Frank. You know sometimes, citizens, we must be fair to each other. Sometimes. Sometimes we must analyze things in a fair and objective manner. Between the two of us, who harassed who? Let's be direct now. Between my colleague ECL, and HH, who is who harassed who? Who is harassing who? Peacefully is living there. The policemen are there. When there was a robbery there, it was found out the people who robbed him were his own cutters. Who discovered that? It is the police, the very police. I was not allowed to use Chipata Airport, Frank. I even asked, I was on the runway for three, four hours there during campaign time, official campaign time. My colleague instructed that I must not be allowed to use airports. How do I know? The footage is there. It's there. But citizens choose to ignore all of that and start pretending that HH is harassing the former president. I have no intention to do that, Frank. I was never brought up like that. 
My brain doesn't work like that. Maybe what people are having difficulty is to accept that I'm not harassing anybody who harassed me. I think that's where the problem is. But get used to that, that my brain works differently. I should have been dead a long time ago. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. It's there. Ngani kumbi ule limbi nijari fwa. Ali fwa ule nijari fwa ngani kumbi. Ngaka weshepo nkamu kakanomba taka fume. Aka fwila mukati. By word of mouth. So now, citizens, can we be fair with each other? If he was being harassed, would he be joking on the roads, public roads? If I joked Frank like that, I went on a road line in 2011, July 2011, I was a dead man. You all know that. But we brought the rule of law, protecting everybody. You talk of pangas. Since we took office, have you ever seen any pangas in the streets being sharpened? In the streets, qua, qua, qua. Can we be fair as citizens and call things by their right names? My brother is free. If anyone is tampering with his freedom, I'm the first one to step in to protect him. I'm the first one. I will be the first one. All we are doing is to follow the law. Frank, when I leave office, I don't want the taxpayer to pay me money, and I'm still in politics. I'm still running UPND. The matter is in court, and the court is bringing these issues out, not me. They're arguing on their own there. So how do I become the problem now? I'm, we are the solution. Frank, let me tell you why I did what I did, and for the people of Zambia. Once we were declared winners, on the 16th, I, I guess I'm right, 16th of August. I think it was 16th of August. 15 or 16th of August. I knew, Frank, that if I did not provide leadership, there would be deaths and killings in the compounds and in the villages. Because the way our colleagues treated us, killing people, maiming people, come on God there. Bullets missing us, taking Lawrence Banda and leaving his young children and wife, taking Joseph Kaunda, taking Saman Sama. Bullets. If I did not do what I did on that day, Frank, at the community house and said nobody will revenge, nobody will avenge, nobody will wage war against a fellow citizen, citizens will have died. And this country today would have been a different country. You wouldn't recognize it. And I knew the blood would be on my head. I would never allow that. Even against those who would have wanted me dead, I don't wish my colleague anything. Frank, I'm available to talk. Talking is the answer. I'm, I've always been available. I don't want to review many things here because I'm responsible. My colleague and I talk be known to you. But what is said in public is a different matter. So how do I deal with such a situation? Someone is not telling the truth there. There are crimes that were committed before. And conversations took place how to treat those issues within the law. I advise let's treat this within the law. But citizens are not aware. But someone goes on a platform and says there is no communication. Now, the day I review, if it's necessary, You'll be shocked. We must repent. Sometimes we must repent so that society becomes normal. I think the danger and the pain that is there, that there is no abnormality, there are no commanders, there are no bangers, there are no guns, that is making some people miss access to cash, illegal cash. I can tell you that I'll put my foot down. That will not be allowed. I think we may close this press conference. We have, we have said enough. This is DJ
start exclusive. Savage. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.